Welcome to the Luke Messia Show. Last night was an incredible night for grassroots Texans across the state who have worked very hard to build and create an environment where conservatives can get enough victories to move Texas to the right in the Texas House and in many other areas, State Board of Education, Republican Party of Texas. We're going to break it all down for you today. Let's get to the show. A week and a half ago, our trusted leader here at Texas Scorecard, Nate Ophi, told me we should record two shows last week so that today's episode could be a kind of a pre-recorded show. And he was very thoughtful and discerning to say that because election day is a crazy day and I was up till two in the morning and I'm now recording this Wednesday morning. And so I said, hey, that's a great idea. I'll let the team know. And we all agreed. And then when I recorded last week's episode, I just completely forgot to record a second show. Completely forgot. And I'm really glad I did. Because today would have just been like a pre-recorded episode about various different topics I wanted to talk about that weren't like as news related. But last night, I was up till two in the morning looking at all these results. And the truth is conservatives had an incredible night. And I'm going to break some stuff down for you. But here's the big picture. The big picture is that the Republican Party, our courts, the Texas House of Representatives, even the State Board of Education are all moving to the right. All of them. And this is a testimony to grassroots conservatives across the state. And I'll share a couple of stories with you all today of examples of the work that grassroots Texans have been doing on the ground. I'm going to break down some house races first. Here's what you have to understand. Hugh Shine, one of the most liberal Republicans in the Texas house lost without even a runoff. Same for Ernest Bales, a very liberal Republican from Liberty County and Steve Allison. These are all people that were key liberal Republicans that often team up with Democrats on a slew of different issues. Mike Alcott dominated against Glenn Rogers. You have to understand that in that district, for those of you who know it, you'll know that Parker County is kind of where Mike's from and Glenn Rogers is where uh, Glenn Rogers is from Palapinto County. And two years ago, I think Glenn Rogers won Palapinto County with like 73% of the vote. That's just a dominating number to have. Not only did Mike win Parker County with 66% of the vote, but he won Palapinto County with 52% of the vote. And just look, this is where I'm going to talk about grassroots victories. Like the grassroots didn't just deliver Palapinto County for Mike Alcott. They also won a massive number of precinct chair elections. Like guys, I talk about this. Hopefully you had your precinct convention or you're going to go to your precinct convention. You're going to go to the Republican party of Texas state convention. Cause know that those moderate forces have recruited Dana Myers to try to take over the Republican party with a more moderate individual. So they're recruiting people to go. So you need to go to the Republican state convention. And if you're excited about last night's victories, then you better gear up, go to your precinct conventions, go to your county convention, go to your Senate district convention and go to the Republican state convention. Be an active member in the process right now. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting distracted. I'm going to warn y'all. I anticipate this show is going to go kind of all over the place. I'm going to try to be organized There's just a lot of information I'm going to try to break down for you as quickly as possible. And there is stuff I'm going to forget or not get to. But Mike Alcott had a massive victory. Mike Alcott is just a total patriot. Shelly Luther unseated Reggie Smith. Um, Reggie Smith is the chairman of the elections committee. He was tasked by Dade Phelan with killing a dozen election integrity bills, which he executed on what he was tasked to do, which was likely a deal cut with Democrats. And the truth is, that was a bad idea. That left him very vulnerable. And then he voted wrong on school choice. So Senator Ted Cruz came against him. And he voted to impeach Ken Paxton. This is a bad combination, guys. Don't do that. Huge victory for conservatives was Wes Verdell. Andrew Murr was the chairman of General Investigating and Ethics who decided to impeach Ken Paxton. He's now replaced by Wes Verdell, who's a strong grassroots conservative patriot. Matt Morgan unseated J.C. Jaton without a runoff in Fort Bend County. 
And I need to explain to you how big of a deal this is. J.C. Jatan is one of the most liberal Republicans in the Texas House. He votes with the Democrat caucus more than Glenn Rogers. So just uh, there, there, my, some of my friends in that live in more the Austin bubble <clears throat> had honest conversations with me over the last several weeks. And we're like, Luke, I mean, why do conservatives not like J.C. Jatan? This is what they asked. And you know what? That's an honest question because for them, if they live in Austin and around that circle, like they're told J.C. Jatan's good. He's conservative. He is one of the 10 most liberal Republicans or 15. I don't remember, 10 or 15. But he literally votes with Democrats more than Glenn Rogers does. And Glenn Rogers votes with Democrats a lot. J.C. Jatan gave a speech on the House floor saying, we need to give taxpayer money to mental health care facilities that are socially transitioning kids with transgender ideology. He never should have done that. These unforced errors of these establishment Republicans set them up. They're in the bubble. They're in the Capitol and they're doing things they never would do at home. If J.C. Jatan was in front of a Republican club, he never, ever, ever would tell them, hey, guys, we need to give taxpayer money to mental health care facilities to build facilities that can socially transition kids. Never would say that. But on the Texas House floor, when all the Democrat chairs are around you, and this is just what you're thinking about, you do stuff like this. Matt Morgan is a strong conservative. And Texans for Lawsuit Reform spent a massive, massive amount of money in that race and lost. Don McLaughlin won the Uvalde seat, which is Tracy King's seat. This is a seat we can flip in November, and conservatives need to focus on flipping this in November. Don McLaughlin won without a runoff. This guy's a patriot, a conservative. Mitch Little defeated Cronda Timish. Guys, I'm going to give... Oh, let me get back up. West Verdell didn't just win. Kerr County had this group of patriots. There is a group, and if you live in the Kerrville area in Kerr County, you need to engage. I think it's the Kerr County Patriots. They're all, I, all the names mix up because there's like, you know, Parker County Conservatives and Wise County this, and then Kerr County Patriots or maybe Kerr Conservatives, Fredericksburg Tea Party. There's all these groups, but here's what you need to know. I think it's the Kerr County Patriots and Terry Hall will correct me if I'm wrong and I'll come back next week and correct it. If you're in Kerr County, you need to connect with the Kerr County Patriots. I went and moderated a forum for these people. They're incredible. Helen Hurd ran for county chair and dominated. A slate of conservative precinct chairs all ran and won. So it's not just that West Verdell wins, but he wins because there's an army that's working to also win little races like a Republican precinct chair position. So when the Republican precinct chair gets elected in Kerr County with 68% of the vote, in their precinct, they also delivered 65% of the vote for West Verdell. And this is a bottom-up movement that has been getting created for a long time. So it wasn't just West Verdell winning. It was also massive Republican Party victories. I believe when the math is added up, Cronda Timish will have spent $2 million on her reelection. And maybe a million of that came from Texans for Lawsuit Reform. A million. I mean... $2 million on a re-election. I said this last week. The governor of Idaho, who's sitting in the mansion, spent $1.2 million to get there. This woman spent $2 million on re-election to a suburban state house seat. Mitch Little served on Ken Paxton's staff during the impeachment. He was one of his attorneys. Incredible victory. Brent Money lost the special election in January because Beto donors and Democrats came out and stole that election. And he won last night with 56% of the vote. Incredible victories for conservatives across the state of Texas. There are even uh, Joanne Schaffner beat Travis Clardy. Travis Clardy was an F-rated legislator. He did vote right on impeachment. So I didn't spend a lot of time talking about Travis Clardy because he voted right on impeachment. And I think that is commendable. But here's the truth. I'm going to give you, I will say this, because this is my observation. Travis Clardy had a chance to run a different campaign than Hugh Shine and the rest of all these other people. He had a chance, and he didn't. He ran the same school anti-school choice playbook. 
And all he had to do is not vote right on wrong on school choice, which he could have done. And he would not have been up against everything he was up against and he would have been reelected. And it's just a reminder that these guys, like you were right on impeachment, Travis, you could have been right on school choice and then you'd have been fine. You'd still be in the Texas House of Representatives. So there has to be a wake-up call to some of these guys. <clears throat> the State Board of Education is moving to the right. Um, Brandon Hall beat Pat Hardy. That's a huge victory for conservatives. She's a longtime board member, but has not been the most pro-charter school, and, and there's other problems. Looks like Tom Maynard and Mary Bone are going to a runoff. That is a State Board of Education seat in Williamson and across the Hill Country. It also looks like Jamie Coleman and Pam Little will be in a runoff. Jamie Coleman, I've known her for a long time. I think the first time we worked in politics together was 2012. So she's been a long time conservative. That would be a huge win for conservatives on the State Board of Education if we got Jamie in there over Pam Little. Ken Paxton swept the court of criminal appeals. And guys, this is how a typical statewide judge race goes. Some guy named Smith and some guy named Law run for judge for Supreme Court or Court of Criminal Appeals. And basically, if you have a better name than the other guy, you win. That's how it works. And honestly, sometimes it's close, sometimes it's far because you got a better name. If one guy's named Law and the other guy's named Rezvinovich, then Law is probably going to get 65% of the vote. But if you have two like normal sounding names, it's usually pretty close. And Ken Paxton Slate dominated. Michelle Slaughter was the only one who like got 45% of the vote. Her other incumbents were getting 40% or under 40% of the vote in the 30s. And Michelle Slaughter has an incredible ballot name. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I ran Michelle Slaughter's original race for the Court of Criminal Appeals. So it was the only Court of Criminal Appeals race I've ever run. But I was a campaign consultant at the time, and she wanted to run, and somebody introduced us, and she's a very nice lady. I disagree with her rulings, to be clear. I don't think, the, and, and I could be wrong. Some people might get mad at me. I don't know that Michelle Slaughter's not still a very nice lady. Nothing I've seen from Michelle Slaughter says she's not still a very nice lady. I don't think she's a good judge. I think she made some bad rulings. And the worst, of course, being the one that gutted our attorney general's ability to prosecute not only election fraud, but state, you know, immigration laws and other problems. We cannot turn our cities over to George Soros funded district attorneys. And that's what the court of criminal appeals wants to do. And three of them, every court of criminal appeals incumbent on the ballot lost last time. Some of them by massive, massive margins. You have a lot of runoff shaping up, and I'm going to go quickly through them. Katrina Pearson against Justin Holland. She's ahead. Stephanie Click against David Lowe. He's in a much better position than he was last time in Tarrant County. Jeannie Morrison's seat's going to go into a runoff. Andy Hopper is first going into the runoff against Lynn Stuckey. Just a total patriot. Kyle Casal's seat is going to be in a runoff. Frederick Frazier is in a runoff, who's a corrupt liberal Republican in Collin County. David Covey took Dade Phelan to a runoff. And I probably should have started with this. But Dade Phelan is in a runoff and he's in second place. And David Covey worked his tail off. And the grassroots in that district worked their tails off. Guys, there were Saturdays that buses drove down, were driven down from Dallas and Houston and all over the state to David Covey's district. There were Saturdays I talked to David Covey and he said, we knocked 2,000 doors in a day. Because a bus showed up of conservative patriots from DFW, 60 of them, ready to go knock doors and talk to people. And that delivered a victory in sending Dade Phelan to runoff. A sitting speaker of the Texas House can't even get reelected. Ed Thompson's seat is in a runoff. Helen Kerwin, strong conservative woman, in a runoff against Dwayne Burns. Cheryl Bean is in a strong position, first place to replace Craig Goldman. Craig Goldman, uh, congressionally, by the way, Tony Gonzalez got forced into a runoff, who's the most liberal Republican of the congressional delegation in Texas. Um, Craig Goldman gets forced into a runoff, who is a very liberal Republican who voted with Democrats a lot. 
Here's what I'll say about Goldman. I've known Goldman for a long time. He's not Glenn Rogers. He's not some of these other guys. He just got caught up with leadership. And here was his mind. He was like a top five Cardinal under Dave feeling. And so these last sessions, he's just been like, I'm a hatchet man. So I'm, I'm in his mind. He's like, I'm still way ideologically more conservative than Glenn Rogers, which is probably true. But Craig, it doesn't matter if you're constantly voting with Democrats just to be part of the leadership team. And he's forced into a runoff. But Brandon Gill, just north of him, wins without a runoff. Brandon Gill is going to be a shining star. I'm telling you right now, guys, I could be wrong, but I'm going to give you this prediction. Brandon Gill is going to be one of the biggest shining stars out of this election cycle, taking his congressional win, replacing Michael Burgess, a massive upgrade to a strong conservative fighter for us in Washington, D.C. Incredible win. Chris Spencer has taken Gary Van Deaver to a runoff in Texarkana. Chris Spencer is against Democrat chairs, is against Dade Phelan, wants to govern conservatively. Incredible win opportunity for us in the runoff. Alan Schoolcraft took John Kemple to a runoff. John Kemple is a very liberal chairman of the Higher Education Committee. Tons of opportunities. Huge, great opportunity for a win there. Um, 83% of the time, an incumbent goes to a runoff. In the last 30 years, they've lost the runoff. 83% of the time. So when I'm talking to you about these incumbents that are in runoffs, realize that everybody realizes they are very vulnerable right now. But I'm telling you right now, the, the Austin Swamp that just spent $20 million to try to save these people are going to spend another 20 or $25 million in the runoff. You, you can not underestimate how much money is about to be spent to try to win these dozen runoffs across the state of Texas. If you were a conservative patriot who is working a different part of the state, you better be looking at your map and figuring out what you're going to do. You might have local runoffs to be involved in, a sheriff's race, a county commissioner's race, maybe your GOP chair's in a runoff. Every one of these races matters. But these are just some of the victories. Now, here's the reality. An election cycle happens, and... There are some races you win by a couple hundred votes like Mitch Little. I'm just going to use this as an example. If grassroots worked, the grassroots and people stepped up financially with their time, their talent, their treasure, went all in for Mitch Little. The establishment went in $2 million for Kronda Timish. I'd say that counts as all in for Kronda. If 160 people make a different decision, Mitch Little's not the state representative. And if that happens, then everyone is like, Oh my gosh, we did everything we could and we lost. Oh. And they move. And, and like a number of people just leave. It happens every cycle. Some donor gives money and then they go, I don't want to give anymore. We lost. Some activist who knocked 500 doors says, I don't want to knock anymore. We lost. Okay. Shelly Luther ran two years ago against Reggie Smith and got 43% of the vote. She ran last night and got 53% of the vote. The difference is that she's now going to be a state representative. Guys, if we lost the Mitch Little race last night, I'd be telling you right now, we lost that race. That's a hard loss. Well fought. The grassroots worked their tail off. Now let's keep executing. And guess what? Mitch Little was a hard fought race and the grassroots worked their tail off. But he won because 160 some odd people made a better decision. And now we need to keep working and executing. If your reason to stay engaged in Texas politics after last night is because of the wins, you're going to burn out. You're going to stop. You're not, you're not going to be engaged in two or four years. Because if you think you're going to win, all, it's, it just, that's not how it works. That's not politics. That's not the fight we're in. So if, if you just got involved in politics last year or two and you're seeing some victories, be grateful. But I'm telling you right now, if your reaction to that is, if your reaction is, I want to now do more in Texas politics because we won, I would seriously encourage you to check that attitude. I'm just telling you. You don't stay engaged in this battle because you win. You stay engaged in the battle because you're called to be in the battle. That's why.
If the victory is what motivates you and keeps gas in your tank, you're going to run out of gas. Your car is going to be broken down on the side of the road at some point in the next two, four, or six years, I promise you. So last night feels good if you're a conservative Republican in Texas. Matt Rinaldi, Chairman Rinaldi, still one of the best leaders in our state. Got involved in the Williamson County GOP chair race, dominated, got involved in the Montgomery County chair race. Look, if you're an insider in Texas politics and you don't know the Montgomery County GOP drama, then you're missing out. But there has been a civil war in Montgomery County for the last, like, I don't know, 150 years, seems like. And I've been in the middle of it sometimes. Conservatives finally won the GOP county chair position. An incredible victory. Cameron County, Deborah Bell, big victory. Brent Lawson ran against Reggie Smith six years ago or whatever in that open seat. Lost. He ran last night for Grayson County chair and crushed it. So now not only do you have Shelley Luther as the state representative in that area, you have Brent Lawson as the county chair in that area. Incredible victories. Incredible victories. There's a lot more I haven't said. Steve Toth got reelected, crushed it. Uh, there's some other stuff I've missed, but here's the deal. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for being engaged in the fight to save Texas. May God bless you. And may God bless Texas. Do you want to get your news from people who share your values? Texas Scorecard. Real news for real Texans.